Lucas Webber, 2015 Australian foil champion, mate. Congratulations, that was uh, that was a pretty tough bout. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, it's always close between me and uh, my opponent Matt. We train together all the time, good friends. So uh, yeah, it was good to edge him out this time, but it's always up and down when it comes to that. So yeah, really happy. You were down, I think, 12-10 there. Uh, what was going through your mind at that stage? Yeah, at that stage he was really um, controlling the tempo of the bout, really, pu really pushing me around a bit. And, um, I kind of realised at the back of my mind what I was doing wrong, but it's about the mental willpower to try, try and get over the hump and try something, have the guts to try something different rather than maybe do the same thing over and over again and get beaten. So I was able to push him back a little bit, take the tempo of his control, change things up a bit and uh, worked out well for me. So yeah, really happy. And in terms of your record in uh, Australian Championships? It's uh, going all right? Yeah, it's going okay. Uh, well, this is my first actual national championship, but um, I won the other uh, two of the other three national open competitions this year. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, not a bad record at all for me. And Lucas, obviously the big picture now is the Olympics and it's a really interesting battle between you and a couple of the boys who decided mm. to go overseas this weekend. Yeah, yeah. When you heard they're going overseas, what did you think? Because obviously those international points are what's pretty valuable. Yeah, they are very valuable and unfortunately for me at the moment, because of my performance at uh, World Champs where I made the um, second day in the 64, I have a few um, international FIE points to uh, go off there so I'm technically in the run in the lead there to go to the Olympic qualifier but um, for those boys it's all about going to the World Cups and fighting to try and see if they can get on level terms but um, yeah I'll be joining them in January and we'll all be fighting for a place there getting that experience at the top level so really looking forward to it. So how many international events do you think you'll be competing in early next year? Well, early next year I'm definitely down for two World Cups one in Paris and one in uh, Bonn Germany um, and we'll see how we go at the, in those and then uh, the qualifier if uh, from after Bond we'll know whether I'm in or not and from uh, there we go to Wuxi in China for the Asian qualifier which should be good. And what's your thoughts about the quality of the field you're likely to come up against or whoever does go to, to Wuxi, the quality of the field you're likely to be up against? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one. It's not really a competition like any other. It's very small, obviously. Each country only gets one representative, and it's only the countries that haven't already qualified for the Olympics. So um, excluded from the competition will probably be uh, China, Japan, Korea, and possibly Hong Kong, depending on how the team rankings work out. Um, all of them are very strong countries, and I'd be happy to avoid all of them. But it, that said, there are some very strong middle countries as well. Kuwait, Singapore, we have a very strong rivalry with. Um, there are a few others. Thailand have a few handy fences as well. Um, Vietnam, there's a few others that will provide a challenge for me. So, yeah, it should be a tough one. So at what stage do you actually allow yourself to start dreaming about the Olympics? Or has it already started? Uh, it's, it's kind of... Well, this one really snuck up on me because I was never really in the running for um, to qualify based on national ranking. Then I secured the unexpected... Well, from my perspective, unexpected points from World Championships. And then... Um, yeah, then it suddenly put me in the running for uh, an Olympic spot. So it's really something that's kind of snuck up on me, but um, I, I'm going to be taking it one step at a time, focus on the World Cups, then after that um, we will know and I'll have a, mo a month and a half, two months to prepare for um, the qualifier and then uh, we'll see how we go. Did that World Championship uh, result make you a better fencer? I mean, just give you that little bit of extra confidence that you, you had what it took? I think so. Um, from, from a, a consistency perspective, I've always struggled against the high level. Like you, you have to put everything on the line and have really no fear when you go up against the top level of competition. The, for me to be able to do that um, every bout to make it to the second day rather than um, get the get knocked out in the first round like I have been in other World Cup events. Um, yeah, it was a big confidence booster for me to sort of realise I could mix it with the big guys. And then even on the second day, I was only um, fell short by two or three points, I think, um, against the guy who I think he finished up coming 10th or something like that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice to be able to say I can mix it with the big guys. Well, mate, congratulations on the, uh, the Australian title and best of luck overseas in January and in the, uh, the run-up to the Olympics. Great. Thanks very much.